Okay, so today I'm going to be giving you some advice about how to use the analysis board on chess.com, uh, either for giving lessons, doing a lecture, or just analyzing games with your friends. Uh, so first of all, you'll need to be logged into chess.com, as I already am. Then you're going to need to go to live chess, because the analysis boards are on the live server because they're a board which people, you know, at different places in the world can see at the same time uh, the moves as they're being played, right? So, same place as you go to play chess. The first thing you're going to want to know is whether you're in Live Chess Simple or Live Chess Premium. See? Right now, we have an option to click on Live Chess Simple. That means we're already in Live Chess Premium. Okay, so don't let this, like, trick you like it's the title. This is actually an option to toggle into Live Chess Simple. You want to be in Live Chess Premium, which is where we are, but here's what it would look like if you were in Live Chess Simple. You would see here the bigger board and less options over here, but an important option that you would have would be over here to switch to Live Chess Premium. And Live Chess Premium is going to give you the best, uh, the best use of the analysis board. So we're going to switch back to Live Chess Premium. If you were in Live Chess Simple, you would want to switch to Live Chess Premium before doing a lesson like that. Oh, one other quick note, all of this is going to work best in the Chrome browser. Okay. All right, so here we are. Uh, we're in Live Chess, and I'm going to click at the bottom to show chat. See, under this chessboard right now, there's no chat box, and it's hard for you to see this right now, but there's a Show Chat button. So if you click on that, then you get this chat window here, which is useful. So we're going to add that back in. I'm going to make this bigger again. This is where you would type something to your opponent right here uh, if you were playing a game, or where you would type something to the room if you were at an analysis board. But first we need to create an analysis board, and that is done over on the right. Now, quick thing about using this whole interface is that if you ever put your mouse between two different areas, it becomes this little two-way arrow that you see, and that allows you to change the sizes of different windows as you need, right? I can put it like this. I can put it here and make my chat bigger or smaller or my board bigger or smaller, right? So you can adjust things as you need like that for the sizes. Now, analysis board is found under events. The reason is, if you were doing a public lecture, or if you were doing a broadcast, or something like that, um, or if there were a relay of games, uh, analysis boards would be used, and this is where they would show up for the public to see. And basically what you need to do is you just click New Analysis Board. Um, now before we make one, let me just show you one quick thing about, uh, about um, this how to use this. Okay, if you see somebody's name, um, you could even do it in the main hall actually. If you see somebody's name, you can click on the name and if they're playing a game or if they've got an analysis board, there will be an option here that will say watch. Okay, Watch is what people are going to use by clicking on your name in order to see your games or your analysis board. Alright, let's make our board. So here the most important thing to set is the access, anyone or invite only. Anyone is if you're going to do something public, invite only is if you're going to want to do something that nobody can see. This is the one thing which once you've set it here, you won't be able to change it in the analysis board. All these other things you'll be able to change, like you can call your analysis board how to move your king. You can call white anand and black your king. But after we've created the board, I'll show you that you can change these things. Same with this initial position. This is to start with something other than the starting position. Rook, knight, bishop, queen, king, bishop, knight, rook. If you don't know, fen is a, is a code that, that spells out a position. It's telling you all the pieces starting from a8 down to h1 with numbers for empty spaces. And it's telling you whether white can castle kingside or queenside, whether black can castle kingside or queenside. It's telling you... Um, whose move it is, in this case white's, and it's telling you what move it is in the game. Okay, but this you can all set after you've already created a board. So the key thing is, if you want to talk about openings in private with a friend, click invite only. If you want to do a private lesson and you don't want anyone else bothering you, invite only. But if you're going to do something public or if you don't care, 
then just click anyone and we'll start the analysis board. Now you see how the analysis board shows up with the title of my board and the black and white names are there. If I want to change those I click on settings. Now settings here I can change the title, I can change the name, right? Like I can say, oops, it's not Anand, it's Kramnik. And um, if you click on make public, then that's going to cause your board to show up over here in this events list. Okay. Now the other thing is whether or not your students have control. People won't be students just by watching. The way you'll make somebody a student is you'll click on their name here and you'll make them a student. Now to be a student they need to be a premium member so in the case of this fellow here who's a basic member when I click on him it's gray I can't make him a premium I can't make him a student because he's not a premium member okay so in order for other people to have like the full control of the board while you're teaching them um, or talking with them they would need to be premium members uh, so anyway here um, giving students full control will allow your student to to use the board fully while you're doing a lesson um, and this also you see you've got these mute options if you're going to do a lecture with like a hundred people and you don't want the chat to be filled then um whoops, sorry hang on it looks like you need to leave the settings before you can adjust the size this. Okay, so um, so as I was saying, you can you can mute people if you don't want the chat room to get flooded with comments. All right, so back to this analysis board. If you want to load a position, you can use either an FEN code like we just saw or a PGN. So the easiest way to get these is um, well, there are two different ways you could get them. One is you could open a text file or a PGN file as text. So this program here is Notepad. Um, if you were on a Mac, the program would be called TextEdit, I think. Um, so a simple program that lets you open up uh, PGNs or FENs, and you see here is an FEN code and you just click FEN you paste it that's control V I used control C to copy it in the other window and then I hit OK and then you get this position here right or I could copy a whole PGN like this control control C switch back over here click on PGN control V paste the whole thing in OK now you see up here I've got the whole game, the moves, the comments, and even variations that you can see from the game. So a student could send you a game of theirs with their notes and you could see their notes during the lesson like this, or they could send you a game and you could you know, prepare some comments and notes you wanted to make about their game, and then you'd have them right there for you to read as you go through it. Also, as you're doing the as you're doing the lesson, let's say here you add an extra variation, right? You just want to make you just want to look at this variation here with your student for a moment during the lesson. And finally you decide that this variation here would not be that good for black. Well, that variation has just been saved in to the text right here. And when you if you want to save that, you can click on PGN, current, and then copy that. And it's got what you've added. So you can copy back out whatever you've done in your analysis board and then keep it for the future so your student can play over it many times, right? So very often you'll be like discussing something more interesting than this move queen f5. You'll discuss it for a while, play through some variations with your student, draw some conclusions, and then you'll be able to save it and um, from this PGN you click current to see what you have right now control C and then you know, go out somewhere else and 
I could now paste it with the new variation in there. All right, I'll cancel that for now. Now, one thing you'll notice is whatever variation you are in is always the main line. So the main line of the game was bishop to e8. That was how the game went, right? But you see, when I added this queen f5 variation, it became the main line, right? Now it's in black, and the main and the actual game variation is in blue. And when I added the move, it became the main line. But also, if I just click on a move, it becomes the main line. So that's just the way it's built. The main line will always be whatever variation you're currently working in. Okay, so if you want to change what the main line is before you save the game, I need to make sure that I've clicked on queen to e8 and then copy back out my PGN from here. Okay? Um, so that's how to load FENs and PGNs. Um, you can also copy a FEN, right? You go to any position, click current, and you'll get the FEN. You can copy that and use it elsewhere. Um, to, all, to be able to load up that position in the future. Okay, another way that you can load a PGN would be directly from a chess-based window. So, um, so for example, I've got this chess-based, whoops, sorry, clicked in the wrong window. Um, I've got this chess-based window here, right? Here I've got moves, here I've got a board, um, so I can play through it, or I can go edit, copy, copy game. Now that has taken my exact PGN over here and copied it. And now I'm going to go into the chess.com analysis board. I'm going to paste and hit OK. And now you'll see it is just loaded with the names of white and black the game that I was looking at in uh, in chess space. So that's another easy way to copy games and get them into your analysis board. Okay, so now let's talk about the other way that you can set up a position on here. Uh, these buttons here, clear, reset, reload, Reset is going to set up the starting position of a chess game. Reload is going to reload the last PGN that I've been using. So you'll notice now I have that whole Knight Orf game from chess base again. Right? Um, and clear board leaves just kings. Now there's a little toggle here for legal or not legal. When legal is toggled, you can only make legal moves. So when legal is toggled, I wouldn't be able to make this black to move. Oh, it just untoggled legal when I did that. You see? But if legal is toggled, it'll have to be white to move. Weird. Okay. Um, so hang on. Let's clear it. So if you wanted to set up a board, what I was doing is I'm just dragging pieces over from the side, like this. Same with white pieces. Uh, if I had a starting position, it would normally say legal, and I couldn't play a move like this. Good. Glad it didn't let me. Now I'm going to unclick legal and try and move my pawn to c5 and it lets me move my pawn to c5. So um, being able to uncheck legal is a way to allow you to just start setting up a position that you want like this, right? Just moving the pieces that are already on the board. It won't let you... It won't let you capture the king. There always has to be a king for both sides. So the king is the one thing you can't do, but you can put your rook over here where your pawn is and your other pawn here, etc. Okay, and clear. We start over here, reset, we get the starting position, you can move these pieces, and you can load PGNs, etc. Um, so that should cover most of the use for this. There's also this button here, Start Voice. If you click on Start Voice, 
you will the first time you click on it be prompted like this for voice flash setup. You have to click allow or deny for allowing live.chess.com to access your camera and microphone. Now it's not actually going to access your camera. It just says that. It's only going to access your microphone and whatever you say all your dialogue and conversation will never be recorded on chess.com. It only passes through. So you click allow, remember, close. Now you're doing voice chat. Okay, and you can just speak to your student while you're making moves. Say, okay, I'm playing e4 here, they're playing c6 here, I'm playing d4. D5 is a really logical move because it uses this pawn on C6 defense to try and challenge white center. But in this game, black played F5, which actually wasn't defended by the pawn on C6, etc. You get my drift, right? Now you can also just stop voice with a click when you want to, start it up again, and people can hear you again. Simple, just like that. Um, the people observing your game will be the ones who are able to hear you when you do that. And that feature, as you may have seen, there for a second, it works best with a headset. I would show you the headset I'm wearing, but i um, not sure how to do that real quick. So, um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's the analysis board here, uh, and I think it should be pretty helpful and useful for you. If you have any questions about how to use it, please uh, go over here, help and support, see there's main hall, help and support, ask some questions about it, or send a message to me or somebody else on chess.com staff. My username being D-P-R-U-E-S-S. -S. Like this right here, see? Staff. Okay, uh, that should cover it. Have a good day. Okay, one thing I forgot, which we're going to go over real quick, is how to indicate uh, highlights on the board. You're going to right click to indicate highlights. Left clicking moves the pieces around. But to highlight something, just right click a square. Or if you right click and drag, you'll make an arrow. See, and wherever I let go is how far it'll make it. There's a the diagonal one. Here's the knight's move. You can't make an arrow from here, from g3 to b6, because that's not how a piece moves. You can only make arrows that indicate actual piece moves. And you can undo by right-clicking on top of something you've highlighted. See? So you can get rid of this arrow by going over it, get rid of this arrow, add an arrow. You can also eliminate all highlights with a single left click, like that. So I'm making some things again, and they're gone. And that's all there is to it. When you see this blue, that's just showing the last piece that you've touched or moved, those yellow and blue uh, colors. But highlighting squares is always red with a single click, or green if you draw lines. OK, that's all.